Hello, and welcome to On a Mission. This podcast is hosted by Mission West Virginia, a nonprofit organization located in Hurricane, West Virginia. Mission West Virginia changes the lives of youth and families in our state by recruiting foster families, providing life skills education, and creating community connections. This podcast represents the opinions of the podcaster and their guests. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only. And because each person is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. Hey guys, welcome back to the On a Mission podcast. Today, we are going to talk about consent. So we really don't talk about consent enough, even though it is really the cornerstone of every interaction between romantic partners. um, Most people are still a little unsure what consent means and what it doesn't. So we're going to go over um, the definition of a consent, a little bit about what consent looks like and a little bit about what it does not look like. So let's go ahead and dive into this topic. Consent is often used as the context of physical or sexual activity with a partner, but has more to do with decision making behind your actions, more so than the actions themselves. To put it simply, consent is an ongoing mutual agreement between partners about what they want to experience and what they don't. You may have heard the phrase, no means no. Usually that's in the context of consent. And that's true. But a statement like that doesn't provide a complete picture of the complexities that go into mutual decision making and respect in a relationship. No means no. And even yes means yes puts the responsibility on one person to resist or to accept an activity. Instead of framing consent as a reactive measure in response to a partner's actions, think of consent as a proactive expression of what partners are comfortable with and want to do together. So consent means respecting boundaries and never making assumptions. Consent can be defined as an on-purpose, sober, chosen, informed, mutual, honest, and obvious agreement. Here are a few rules of consent. It is the responsibility of the person initiating a sexual act to obtain clear consent. Whenever you are unsure if consent has been given, ask. Consent cannot be manipulated. True consent means people are allowed to say no. Consent is a process, which must be asked for every step of the way. If you want to move to the next level of sexual intimacy, that needs to be agreed upon. Giving consent ahead of time does not waver does not waive a person's right to change their mind or say no later. Consent is never implied and cannot be assumed, even in the context of a relationship. A person who is intoxicated cannot legally give consent. If you're too drunk to drive a car, you're too drunk to give consent. The same goes for any other substances that may inhibit your ability to think clearly. A person too far below your age range cannot legally give consent. If a person is in a lower position of authority, they cannot give consent to someone with a higher power differential. The absence of no does not mean yes. And consent is not just about getting a yes or no answer. It's about understanding what a partner is feeling. 
Let's go over what consent looks like. Consent means communication every step of the way. Don't just assume your partner is comfortable with your actions. It requires a clear and enthusiastic yes. Meaning, if someone seems unsure, stays silent, doesn't respond, or says, maybe, they are not saying yes. If you're caught up in the heat of the moment, here are some ways to get a temperature check before moving forward. Simply ask, are you comfortable? Say, is this okay? Ask, do you want to slow down? Or do you want to go further? Consent also means breaking away from preconceived notions of gender roles. There are no rules about who can initiate intimacy or who might want to take it fast or slow. The more comfortable you feel expressing your boundaries and desires, the more pleasurable your interactions together will be. All right, so let's go over what consent does not look like. Behavior like dressing in a certain way, flirting or accepting a ride or a gift or a drink is not a form of consent. Neither is saying yes or not saying no while under the influence of drugs or alcohol or doing so because you feel pressured or too afraid to say no. Consent is all about respecting boundaries and never making assumptions. Some red flags that indicate your partner is not respecting your consent include pressuring or guilting you into doing things that you may not want to do, suggesting that you owe them something like material items, sexual acts, etc., either because you're dating or because they claim to have done something for you, reacting negatively with sadness, anger, resentment, etc. If you do not consent to something or don't do so immediately, that's a red flag. Ignoring your indications, either verbal or nonverbal, that show you do not consent is also a red flag. Remember, it is important to get consent every single time, even if you've done something before or you're in a committed relationship. A person can decide to stop an activity at any time, even if they previously agreed to it. And most importantly, everyone has a right to their own body and to feel comfortable in their intimate relationships. If you have questions about consent or uh, need to talk to somebody about red flags in your relationship, you can contact Love is Respect via chat by texting the word love is, all one word, L O V E I S to 22522, or by calling 1 866 331. 9474. We really appreciate all the work that Love is Respect does for um, teen dating violence in general. And uh, this information was pulled from their website in several sections. So you can find tons more about consent, about boundaries, and about teen dating violence and um, really anything relationship related on their website at loveisrespect.org. That's it for us today, guys. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye. Please make sure to visit our website at missionwv.org to learn more about foster and adoption in the state of West Virginia or our healthy relationships curriculum. If you're interested in learning more about foster or adoption outside of the state of West Virginia, please visit adoptuskids.org.